Hard Guy by H. B. Carlton. He was standing at the side of the glassite superhighway, his arm half raised, thumb pointed in the same direction as that of the approaching rocket car. Ordinarily, Frederick Marden would have passed a hitchhiker without stopping. But there was something in the bearing and appearance of this one that caused him to apply his brakes. Martin opened the car door next to the vacant seat beside him. Going my way? he asked. A pair of steady, unsmiling blue eyes looked him over. Yeah. All right, then, hop in. The hitchhiker took his time. He slid into the seat with casual deliberateness and slammed the car door shut. The rocket car got under way once more. They rode in silence for half a mile or so. Finally, Marden glanced questioningly at his companion's expressionless profile. Where are you headed for? he asked. Dantonville, he spoke from the corner of his mouth without turning his head. Oh, yes. That's the next town, isn't it? Yeah. Not very communicative, reflected Martin, noticing the rather ragged condition of the other's cellolex clothing. Have much trouble getting rides? The passenger turned his head. His blue eyes were without emotion. Yeah, most guys are leery about picking up hitchhikers. Scared they'll get robbed. Martin pursed his lips and nodded. Something to that, all right. I'm usually pretty careful myself, but I figure you looked okay. Can't always tell by looks, was the calm reply. Course, us guys mostly pick out some guy with a swell atomic mobile, if we're gonna pull a stick up. When we see an old heap like this one, there's usually not enough dough to make it pay. Martin felt his jaw drop. Say, you sound like you go in for that sort of thing. I'm telling you right now I haven't enough cash on me to make it worth your while. I'm just a salesman, trying to get along. You got nothing to worry about, his passenger assured him. Stick-ups ain't my racket. An audible sigh of relief escaped Martin. I'm certainly glad to hear that. What is your, uh, racket, anyway? The blue eyes frosted over. Look, chum, sometimes it ain't exactly healthy to ask questions like that. Pardon me, Martin said hastily. I didn't mean anything. It's none of my business, of course. The calm eyes flickered over his contrite expression. Skip it, pal. You look like a right guy. I'll put you next to something. Only keep your lip buttoned, see? Oh, absolutely. I'm Mike Egan, head of the Strato Rovers. No, Martin said, plainly awed. The Strato Rovers, eh? I've heard of them all right. The other nodded complacently. Yeah, we're about the toughest mob this side of Mars. We don't bother honest people, though. We get ours from the crooks and racketeers. They can't squeal to the interplanetary police. There's a lot to what you say, agreed Martin. And of course, that puts your mob in the Robin Hood class. Robin Hood? Nuts! That guy was a dope. Running around with bows and arrows? Why, we got a mystery raid that paralyzes anybody that starts up with us. They're all right when it wears off, but by that time we get away. Martin was properly impressed. A mystery ray. With a weapon like that, you should be able to walk into a bank and clean it out without any trouble. His passenger's lip curled. I told you we don't bother honest people. We even help the SP sometimes. Right now, we're working with the Earth-Mars G-Men in rounding up a gang of fifth columnists that are planted to take over the government. They are led by the Black Hornet. This Black Hornet goes around pretending like he's a big businessman, but he's really an international spy. 
A what? An international spy, repeated Marsden's companion shortly. The EMG men said he's the most dangerous man in the country, but he won't last long with the Strato rovers on his trail. Marsden nodded. I can believe that. Tell me, Egan, what are you doing out here, around a small earth town like Dentonville? The government's building some kind of an ammunition place near here, and I understand the Black Hornet's figuring on wrecking everything. Of course, he won't get away with it. Scattered plasticade houses on either side of the road indicated they had reached the outskirts of Dentonville. Mike Egan pointed ahead to a small white house, set back among a cluster of trees. That's where I'm holed up. Drop me off in front. A young woman in a faded blue, satin glass house dress, was standing at the gate of the white picket fence. She watched in silence as the passenger stepped out of the rocket car and lifted his hand to the driver. A careless farewell. Thanks for the lift, chum, said Mike Egan. Not at all, replied Marsden. Glad to have been of service to Mike Egan. The woman smiled to him. He told you his name, I see. Marden lifted his hat. Indeed he has. Michael is all right, she said. I do think, though, that he reads too many Buck Gordon interplanetary comic books for a boy of eleven. The End of Hard Guy by H. B. Carlton